My name is Jim Moulton, and I'm again going to talk about some of the exercises that we can practice to move our body within the three anatomical planes. Quick review on what those planes are and the type of motion. The coronal plane, which is the front plane, which our body moves this direction, with our arms maybe side to side or moving our legs side to side, maybe like a jumping jack type of movement. The sagittal plane, which would be the plane going forward and backward, any of the exercises where you're bending forward or back, um, running, walking, hiking, most of those types of movements are uh, in the sagittal plane. Swimming for the most part is moving uh, in the sagittal plane, but there are some exercises obviously when you're swimming where the shoulder rotates and going into the transverse plane. So then the transverse plane, which would be moving our body on our vertical axis. So those types of exercises would be probably more in the yoga or Pilates, um, some training for different types of sports gets the body to move that way. Uh, speaking of sports, you know, they're, they're great, especially when we're young, to be able to train and be active in those type of activities. Movements like, uh, let's say, basketball, tennis, those type of activities do get the body moving through the three planes of mobility. Problem is, as we get older, it starts to shock the joints because of the amount of tensity that we put into trying to move and play those, those sports or those activities. So while I recommend them when you're younger, basketball, football, tennis, any of those type of movements, baseball, softball, they are great when we're younger, but we have to pay attention to, to our body and as to what phase of our life we are in and adjust our exercises accordingly. So Tai Chi, Qigong, martial arts, those are the types of exercises you can practice throughout your whole lifetime because they have a wide spectrum of intensity and difficulty that you can practice at a, a very basic level all the way up to a very intense athletic competitive level. So to get back to what we're talking about with the movements, we're going to focus today on uh, a movement where we're moving our body kind of in a flat plane with that side to side movement. And we'll begin this way. I'm gonna to face towards my, my left side and draw my right leg back into that bow stance that I've been speaking of. My uh, bow stance has my left knee over my ankle. Try not to extend it past the toes, anywhere between that range from the toes back to above the ankles, great. My back leg is fairly locked during the beginning part of the movement. My right ankle and foot are turned on a 45 degree angle. My feet are about as wide as my shoulders, maybe even slightly wider if you have issues with balance and stability. So what we're going to do next, I put my hand on my hip. We follow the same pattern we've been doing all along with a lot of these exercises where we start getting the feet in the right position. Once the feet are in the right position, we can shift our hips. Our hips direct our torso to be able to turn and move. Our torso turning helps to direct our shoulders and our arms to manifest the rest of the exercise. So again, back to the feet. I got the shifting forward and back. Right hand on my hip. As I start to draw back, I'm going to make a pinch with my fingers, like a hook. And that's gonna to come to my hip. And then I come back forward. So I shift back, pinch the fingers, bring it to my open palm, let the arm drop as I shift forward. So this gets us going forward and backward with some lateral movement with the spine going to the right side and then back to neutral being facing towards my left side. So we wanna keep adding on. So as I get to here and I come back, I'm gonna extend my right arm. My hand comes out and I make this V shape for an open palm strike. So back to where we started from. I got the bow stance, hand on my hip. Now I'm gonna start with my left hand, making that pinch and coming back. When I shift forward, my arm extends. So I'm getting the momentum of this back leg being chambered or flexed so as to help propel my shoulders, my spine, my arm, to do the open palm strike. Draw back, hook, shift forward, extend. So if that's all good, I start to try to coordinate this together. But really, it still comes back to my feet moving first, pushing into the hips, then my hips turning and moving my torso, and then finishing with the arm. Make sure we add deep breaths. So I'm gonna inhale, and then exhale. Notice how I have some coordination and timing here where everything kind of comes back, but now it goes back to the feet, to the waist, to the arms and shoulders. Inhale when you draw back, exhale when you go forward. 
you'll notice I keep doing this motion with my hands where there's the timing of one hand coming back to my hip as the other hand goes out. When I draw back to the hip with my right hand, the other hand is ready to pinch as if I'm putting something in my, my palm. And then I go back, the hands work together. So these have this twisting motion. So again, that's the traverse plane, transverse plane of my shoulder. Normally it's the spine turning this way, but being that the shoulder has that ball and socket joint, we can have that transverse rotation also. So I'm gonna start again, hands on my waist above my hip, shift back, draw the hand back, shift forward, extend the arm out. Inhale as we draw back, exhale as we extend. Now ideally as we're doing this, we keep our focus on the direction that we're going to be moving. I don't want to be looking all around, looking up, looking down at my feet. Those are all where they're supposed to be. Keeping my focus on one point, one direction, is very good for many things, but it makes the neck muscles start to strengthen. The neck muscles are strengthened, it also helps st stabilize our focus. The eyes are focused, that helps the optic nerve stay healthy and helps with relieving stress that comes from straining our eyes. So I don't want to strain my eyes, but I want to focus my eyes on where my arm is going to end up. So once again, let's slow this down a little bit. We breathe in, we breathe out. Inhale, exhale. So I'm pushing with my feet, directing with my waist, manifesting the movement into my arms, and hands. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So let's do it one more time. Inhale. Exhale. So with all these exercises, we need to practice them on both sides. If we just do one side, we favor that one side, then again, that's going to cause imbalances. And again, within those three anatomical planes, we're trying to have balance throughout all three of those. Balance the left side, the right side, the top to the bottom, forward and back, inside and out. So to do the opposite side, again, start with my feet together in a neutral position, draw back into the bow stance, my right knee's over my ankle, my back foot turns on a 45 degree angle. I have this channel, this width of my shoulders, plus maybe a little bit more if we have stability and balance issues. So this gets us back over to here. I start the movement with the hips moving forward and backward, trying to make sure my knee doesn't go past my toes, putting undue strain on the knee joint. If that's all fine, I start to do the hand movement where I put my hand on my hip, other hand pinches into a hook, comes to the palm, we push out. So I draw back, wind up the arms, push forward, extend the arms. Same thing again, the feet are pushing into the hips, the hips direct the torso. The torso manifests the movement into the shoulders, the arms, and to the hands. So that connection all together gives us what we call uh, kinetic linking, where you start to move one part of your body, and then the next part of the body, and the next part of the body.